Good morning. I'm Senator Dr. Andre Houghton. I'm also a senior lecturer at the University of the West Indies with the Department of Economics, and I want to thank the Ministry of National Security, as well as the JD of Jamaica this Defense Force, for organizing this important uh, symposium on resilience of Caribbean countries. Now, my role today, I'm going to speak about the economic resilience of our country and the economic resilience of the Caribbean in general. Now, when you look up, when you when you speak about resilience. You speak about the strength of something. So I know the soldiers can, can, can agree with me that it is important for us to develop what we call resilience or to be resilient. Now, in an economic standpoint, to be resilient, and from, from, from our point of view, it is our ability to withstand and recover from external shocks. So what are external shocks? External shocks are occurrences that happen outside of our country that has a bearing on us domestically. For example, now with the COVID-19 crisis, it is an external economic shock that is having a negative impact on the domestic economy of Jamaica, the domestic economy of the Bahamas, the domestic economy of Haiti, the domestic economy of all the islands and mainlands that form this Caribbean region. And it's not just having a negative impact on the Caribbean, it is having a negative impact on countries around the world. So that is one example of a negative shock. If you can remember back in the 1970s, there was a vast improvement uh, or increase, sorry, uh, in the price of oil. And that also too was a negative shock. So there are different types of negative shocks. But the key here, what we are here to discuss is how does a country prepare itself to become resilient to these shocks if and when they occur. So let's break it down. An economy is made up of three basic agents. The firm that sells goods and services, for example, they buy a t-shirt from the firm, you go to work for the firm, some of us manage his firm, but the firm provides goods and services to the economy. Now, household is the other economic agent who are people who provide labor resources to the firm. So for example, I work at the university, you, this person who is taping the, the, the recording works uh, with a TV station. Uh, the soldiers, they work with the JDF and, and so on and so forth. So the, the household and the firm, the household and the firm are now a part of the economy who contains also the government. So there are three economic agents, the household, the firm and the government. So when you're talking about the resilience of an economy, you're talking about how does an economy withstand shocks? How does an economy recover from shocks? So we're talking, how does the household withstand shocks? How does the household recover from shocks? How does the firm withstand shocks? How does the firm recover from shocks? And how does the government recover from shocks? Now, basically, what we're talking about here is the strength of the household or the strength of the resources provided to the household, the strength of the firms, or the strength of the resources provided to the firm, or the strength of the government, which are the resources provided to the government. Now, fundamentally, Caribbean countries are what we call small island developing states, and we are a part of what we call the, the developing or lesser developed world. And in this case, our income level, which, which is the amount of money that we earn per year, per month, and so on and so forth, uh, is important for us to examine because this tells us how we are now able to afford what we want to buy. Now in this case, our GDP per capita, which is the amount of money we earn uh, per individual per annum, our GDP divided by the total population uh, is about 6,000 US dollars for the year. Now in this case, you want to look at our expenses that we have. Because if our expenses are greater than the 6000 even before the shock, we are going to be in a negative position. So we have to understand that if we are looking at household expenditure and we are looking at household income, then the household income must be closer, equal or greater than the household expenditure in order for them to survive, have the ability to save and then be able to withstand whatever external shock that comes their way. The firm. The firm must also be in a, in a position to withstand these shocks 
and how does a firm withstand shocks? The firm must be earning an income in order for it to be able to hire the services that it needs in order to carry out its day-to-day -day activities. Now, what you realize is that with this COVID-19 lockdown, many firms have had to be restructuring how they operate because one, we want to stay close but remain far away. This means that a lot of the services that are normally provided, one, have to be done remotely, or two, has, has to be done in a way that it allows limited or less interaction. Remember that the government passed some laws to say that we must social distance so that a lot of the events, a lot of the activities are talking about ATI, which is a big income runner to the country, are talking about carnival, are talking about uh, just typical nightlife across Jamaica has been impacted so much. And a, a, a large part of our economy is dependent on services that were negatively impacted by this COVID-19 crisis. Jamaica's economy is about 70-75% service driven and a large percentage of that surrounds the tourism industry. And this tourism industry is our bread and butter. It's our main basket. And it's not just Jamaica, it's the entire Caribbean. And we've all been affected. So because the tourism industry has been affected and it has such severe forward and backward linkages, it has been having a negative impact on the earning potential of the firm and the earning potential of the household. And therefore, because the government source of income is collecting tax from these two groups, it has have had a negative impact on the earning potential of the government as well. However, however, what we have learned from this crisis is that it has given us the ability to look closer at how we have been operating as a country, how businesses have been operating, and we are now trying to become more and more efficient to get rid of wastage because in this case, we want to be able to do the things that we have been doing, but at a lower cost. We want to be able to do what we have been doing, but now we want it to evolve to meet the new world that is moving into the fourth industrial revolution, that is moving into the internet of things, that is moving into the computer now because the industrial revolution that we're looking at now, which is the fourth industrial revolution is technologically driven. It is driven by people who want to be a part of what we call the gig economy. And the gig economy provides an opportunity for workers who are not structured to function in the regular nine to five atmosphere. Look at apps like Uber that allows a taxi driver to log on, be their own boss, drive whatever, whatever hours a day they feel like driving, log off, and they, they are not bombarded with a boss saying you have to come at 8 o'clock or with a boss saying I need to get this done at 7. You look at an app like Fiverr that allows freelancers, people who draw, people who create animation, people who create graphic design, all these people to be a part of the new functioning economy. Now, entertainment is a big part of Jamaica's culture and it intertwines with the tourism industry because a large part of our tourism industry is surrounded by the entertainment industry. Reggae some fest had to be cancelled. Now, there are a lot of people who were dependent on Reggae some fest to earn a, a, a large income for the summer. There are a lot of people who are dependent on Reggae some fest to bring livelihoods back to their households, to increase their household income. So we have to think about it. Are we as resilient as we purport ourselves to be? This is our thought. What is resilience? It's our ability to withstand and recover from economic shocks. This COVID-19 crisis has illustrated to Jamaica, illustrated to the Bahamas, illustrated to Barbados, illustrated to Guyana, that the world is rapidly evolving. And so too, we do. We must evolve to meet the world where it is. And what does this mean? This means that flexi work week, flexi work time must be taken seriously. This means that the tourism product that we offer to the rest of the world must be diversified in such a way that it provides an income. And I, let me speak to you about the tourism workers. Many of them, even after one week, one week, not a month, not a year, one week after the COVID-19 crisis hit them, could not find income to sustain their families and pay their bills. 
it's a very serious statement. Because when you look at a country like Jamaica and we talk about our net international reserves, which is the amount of money we have available to us to make foreign purchases, the minimum that we're allowed to have is three months. Three months, which is 12 weeks worth of supplies. So if the country, based on international standards, must have at minimum three months worth of reserves, then we expect also the household to, in their savings, have enough income to afford at least three months worth of goods and services and payment of bills if a crisis should ensue. That is resilience. That is the ability to withstand shock because a shock is going to last three months, six months, two months, who knows, but it's going to last for a period of time. How resilient you are depends on the buffer that you have created for yourself and your family. And the soldiers can talk. The more robust you are, the more you are. That's why they have age limit and height limit for the army, because they need to know that the strength of the country is resilient. And it's the same thing with our finances. Our finances, and the artists sing about it, bank book of a tick. Because now the country uh, is in a position where we all have to change our mindset. We all have to change how we think, and we all have to understand that the world is moving at a pace where if we do not evolve, then we will move from developing or lesser developed to least developed. And the countries in Africa that were classified as least developed are now doing things to improve the standard of living, are doing things to improve the robustness of their economies by increasing the value of the goods and services that they produce. So where does that leave us? Intra-regional trade in the Caribbean between countries, intra-regional, so trade between Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, Haiti, Guyana, Belize, whomever are a part of the Caribbean is about 4% per year. Let me make that soak. Trade, intra-regional trade in the Caribbean between us as neighbors is about 4% per year. While intra-regional trade between EU countries, which is a similar economic union to CARICOM, is about 40%. Intra-regional trade between the South African Union, which is a similar union, plus or minus, and we can talk about the differences currency difference here and there. But the intra-regional trade is about 25%. Intra-regional trade in Latin America is over 20%. What does this mean? This means that as Caribbean countries, we are not strategizing enough to enhance the level and quality of intra-regional trade. All of us, or let me not say all, with the exception of Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana, most of us are providing sun, sand, and sea. Jamaica diversifies into entertainment. Trinidad does also. But you get the point. There is not enough goods and services being produced in order for us to increase the level of trade between ourselves. As a result, this also has an impact on the, our ability to earn income and the ability of the money multiplier to rotate within the Caribbean before it leaves to other borders. The Caribbean must now look at itself as a trading block to see how best they can increase the quantity and the value of intra-regional trade of goods and services. What does that mean? It means that Barbados must now be providing something that Jamaica demands. Jamaica must now be providing something that Barbados demands. Trinidad, Guyana and all these countries, and it's there, rice is in Guyana, oil is in Trinidad, Jamaica now, we have to look at the goods and services that we're producing. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, I've been handing out seeds, many seeds, and the concept came from my analysis of where we are as an economy and where we need to go. So I made an analogy, a very basic analogy about us running what we call a Jack and Jill economy. And the Jack and Jill economy is basically an economy defined with a lot of effort with little reward. 
So you find Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. No water. So you went up the hill. Imagine going up a hill to catch a pail of water. A lot of effort that will take. But you come down without the water, so you put out effort without any reward. Jack, in this case, instead of going up the hill, should get a beanstalk. So the beanstalk theory is a theory that we've been developing with a little smart effort that yields great reward. The idea of Silicon Valley in, the, in America is a beanstalk theory. The fourth industrial revolution through the computer provides these beanstalks for us. It provides an opportunity for us to use our common sense and our ingenuity, our skills, and provide a meaningful way of earning income, a meaningful way of creating wealth. Farming now also, so moving from the figurative to the literal, because the beanstalk theory is a figurative theory, but it can be also considered to be literal if we look at the importance of agriculture to the development of the country. Now, when I went to the market, a pound of lettuce was $1,000. Three months ago, a pound of lettuce was $200. So the price has gone up five times. I've been handing out lettuce seeds. A lot of people call me, Andre, we don't have any lettuce. We can't get this into market. Well, plant some seeds, plant some seeds, plant some seeds, plant some seeds. Many of these people now are happy because they have lettuce in their kitchen. And this is a policy that we need to practice as Jamaicans. We need to minimize our domestic expenditure in certain items that we can produce ourselves and transfer our spending potential to other things. Move our spending potential to research and development. Move our spending potential to earning the income that we need through the beanstalk theory. So we need to invest. The internet of things, the fourth industrial revolution, all these play a factor in how modern economies have evolved and are evolving. Look at a country like Rwanda. I admire them so much. They have been through so much. Civil War, the Tutsi and the Hutus, Hotel Rwanda is a good movie you can watch. But now they have found renewed strength through their leadership. They, are, they have developed a more robust economy. They have developed more resilience as an economy. These are economies that we need to admire. These are economies that we need to fashion. If it is the case that we want to develop as a sovereign nation, they're making their own cell phones. They're making their own VWs. They're looking at how to use artificial intelligence to move production processes forward. They're, they're in robotics. They're making chips. So, so, so the key here is that we want to move into an economy that is producing high-valued goods, that is engaging the people in a meaningful way where they are using their brains. Because we are very smart in Jamaica. Whether we go to school, yes or no, Jamaican people are very, very smart. They put a Jamaican anywhere and they can survive. And there are stories about Jamaicans who brought air conditioning units to hell and the devil had to chase them out. So what I'm saying is that we have the ability to do whatever we want to do. We just need the leadership to do so and the approach that is necessary for us to do so. We have become selfish. And never mind that because economics is a discipline that is developed on selfishness. So we, 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 we have individual pursuits like, for example, people aspire to be leaders without aspiring to have a positive change to the people around them. I think that we should aspire to have a positive change rather than aspire to be a leader because the leadership is just the outcome, it's, just, it's not the activity. The activity is what we do, how we organize people, how we are, help them to create a better future. I'm very happy that today I was given the opportunity by the Jamaica Defense Force to give this discussion, this lecture on developing resilience. Because what this has done is that it has highlighted the importance of the army. Much of the research and development that takes place in America, that takes place in the, in the EU, that takes place in the Germany and in, in, in the Russia, in the Cuba, in the China, 
in, in, in all the, the, the major players in global commerce begins with the military. The cell phone, the camera phone, video calling, all these began with the military. So the military has an important role to play in how a country moves forward. So it's not just about maintaining discipline. It's not just about maintaining public order when the police fails. It's about critical research and development that, need, that is needed for a country to move forward. And the military, and I'm very happy that I'm here today because the Caribbean Military Academy has done so well. And they have the room to improve. And given that soldiers are more disciplined, I believe in this institution. I believe in your potential. I believe in your ability to be a premier institution straight across the Caribbean that is driving research and development in modern things, in futuristic things, in solar development, solar energy, the fourth industrial revolution, mobile money. These are things that the country needs. These are things that the army can pilot for a country like Jamaica. Soldiers, I implore you, you are not soldiers for no reason. You are soldiers because you decided that you want a better country. So you are giving up your lives to defend Jamaica. That is why you are a defense force. This war that we are fighting is not really physical. As much as it is economics. As much as it is finding a sustainable path to create the resilience that our people need to survive. It is important that we think about these things. It is important that we think about our role and think about how we must integrate to become who we need to be. A lot of people are going to be negative around you. A lot of people won't want to see you achieve the objectives and the goals that you set out to achieve. A lot of people are going to be distractors and they are going to pretend as if they want you to but they don't really want you to because they benefit from the position that you are in now. But you don't have to be this. You don't have to be in this position. The country, the Caribbean, has the potential to be a premier trading block across the world if we think carefully, if we apply ourselves properly, and if we want the economic resilience that we so talk about, we have to work for it. We have to work for it. And for a country that has been so far behind, it's not just about talking. It's about pooling ourselves together, finding the discipline and the intrinsic motivation and the willpower that we need to move Jamaica forward. It's important. And I'll talk about two theories. There are, imagine there are four people living in a, in a country and each person cooks for themselves. If each person is cooking for themselves, then each person only gets one type of food. Following? Now assume that there are four people, but each person is now cooking for everybody else except themselves. So when I cook, I feed the other three. And when they cook, they feed the other three. Each person ends up now with three different meals, a variety, a variety. And they didn't even cook for themselves. So that is the difference between selfishness and selflessness. Selfishness, you end up with one plate of food, one choice. Selflessness, you end up with three choices. Or if as many people there are in your community or in your country, you end up with that amount of choices when you look out for the others around you as opposed to looking out for just yourselves. Resilience is important. It is important that we understand that macroeconomics plays an important role in how countries evolve. And different sections of the economy Different fractions of the economy plays a role in how the country integrates to achieve efficiency. Let me repeat. Different assets, different facets, different groups of people, different organizations play a role in how the country integrates to achieve its objectives. Jamaica is an important country, not just to the Caribbean, but to the world. We see the entire world now is in crisis. Jamaica has to step up. The Caribbean has to step up. And there is no time like the present. I want to thank the Caribbean Military Academy again. 
I want to thank the JDF, Jamaica Defense Force, and also I want to thank the Ministry of National Security for giving me the opportunity to present this lecture to you today. I hope you take what I say into consideration and go and research it on your own on your computers. I hope that you looking to what I've been doing and looking to how to create a resilient economy because together, if we focus together, if we understand our roles and together, if we exert the effort that is necessary, we can achieve the objectives that the country and the Caribbean so desires. I thank you today.